Some would like to have a four-team playoff uh, chosen with the teams chosen by a committee after the bowl games. Uh, others say, oh, no, just go with two teams after the bowl games. And then I've gotten some that are 24, 32-team playoffs. So uh, people <laughs> just can't agree. Certainly fans can't, and I think coaches also. Insight from the College Gridiron. This is Sirius XM's College Football Playbook. Now back to Jack Aroo and Mike Leach. Those were the thoughts and observations of the BCS director, Bill Hancock, when he joined me and Mike Leach a couple of weeks ago to discuss the BCS and to discuss playoffs versus the BCS. Now, our next guest is named Brandon Kennedy, and uh, at age 21, he decided to uh, to put his, for the lack of a better term, put his uh, put his passion where, uh, where it belonged, in Washington, D.C., and spent most of the summer in Washington, D.C., lobbying the Judiciary Committee and anybody else that would listen to him about his plan to do away with the BCS and to institute a 10-game play, a 10-team playoff. And he did it, Mike, despite the fact that he had no money, he was forced to live as a homeless person, not as a, not as a hobo, but as a homeless person, because that's how important he thought that this issue was and he joins us now he is back in his home state of washington state and uh brandon we we appreciate it and and i gotta tell you right at the top i i've never met anybody that was would be that willing to chuck it all at such a young age to try and campaign for something that uh that that you believe so passionately about well explain to us how you came about with the decision to go to washington and 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 try and get the ear of politicians to uh, see the fallacy of the BCS? <clears throat> well, first I'd like to say thank you for inviting me on the show today. I really do appreciate this uh, opportunity to come and speak with you. But, you know, what had happened was, you know, I started sending my proposal after it had been created. I started sending it to the administrators of the BCS and the NCAA, and there was really no response. And I just felt like, you know, the same way as I feel now today is, Bill Hancock's response is weighed in the court of law that he's not going to be able to win. So I felt like getting it to the powers uh, of the District of Columbia was the best thing to do. And me being homeless probably wasn't the best situation, but at the same time, I definitely got you know a whole learning of the politics and what it actually takes to get the BCS to listen. Now, where are you from originally, and, uh, and uh, what... How did you decide this course of action exactly? I am uh, born and raised in Spokane, Washington. Uh, I was born in the Holy Family Hospital. And what I, what I did was, I, I, how I came up with this plan, and one thing I wanted to correct that I heard him say that I wanted to do away with the BCS, and that's not entirely true. I do want to do, do away with some of the administrators, but my plan actually is the BCS. You see, uh, December 5th, they're going to announce the BCS bowl games and who's going to the bowl games. And my plan is to take, after they announce the bowl select, after the bowl select who they're going to play and participate in their bowls, we would take those teams, those 10 teams, we would reseed them, we would play the games at the home host, at the home hosting model, and then you would see that the losers would still go compete in BCS bowl games. Why do you only want ten games? I only want I only want ten teams, is because that is currently how the BCS is comprised. It's comprised of ten BCS participants, six are which are automatic qualifiers, and then four at large bids. And so I didn't want to tweak it with the system too much. I just wanted to use what we already have set up in place and improve it. So instead of adding teams or minimizing teams, I just use what what is currently constituted within the current system. What about the conference championship games? Okay. So, you see, you know, the SEC champion, is, they're going to they're gonna play all their games the last game on the December 4th, and all those games will still occur. So let's say if Auburn were to win the SEC, champion, the SEC championship, they would actually still go to the Sugar Bowl if they didn't advance to the national championship 
through the playoff format. So all the pack, the pack, the new Pac-12 championship, the new Big Ten 12 championship, all those, all those championships are still going to occur. And in fact, you're actually going to increase the importance of them. You see, with the Big Ten, with the Big Ten right now, none of those teams realistically are going to make it into the BCS National Championship game unless there's a fallout in the last two weeks. But with the implementation of the Kennedy proposal, it was the, uh, the Big Ten champion still has national significance because the winner of that conference is going to go compete in a NCAA sanctioned tournament. And that, and, and, and your idea is to have have that tournament in the weeks leading up to these BCS bowl games. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I, I I still I got I got to tell you Brandon it's I, I, it's it takes a lot to 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 put aside your own life to try and campaign for this and it's you know and you've been you've been stymied every you know everywhere you turn and you, you still don't give up on it uh, you know why are you so passionate about this I'm I'm so passionate on the issue just because you know I was I've seen it in my mind you know uh, being able to actually debate against all the staunch opponents against the playoffs and I just feel like in the end when it's on the national platform that the Kennedy proposal is going to come out on top you know when I you know I'm reading and I see you know President Gee of Ohio State he wants to keep the Rose Bowl it's like the Big Ten the Pac Ten and the Rose Bowl are so staunch against the playoffs. But when it comes to the Kennedy proposal, is they're still going to go receive a five, a five day, six day, or seven day bowl trip in Pasadena. It's like you still get the the parade, you still get the Rose Bowl, you still get the Rose Bowl championship, you still get the Rose Bowl offensive MVP, defensive MVP, and you know that's why I'm just I'm so passionate when it comes to you know the issue is because I feel like. You know, we st- I'm still giving the presidents and chancellors, you know, what they want on paper at least. I'm still giving them their Rose Bowl championship. Uh, I mean, what you're doing is pretty extreme. I mean, uh, you you wouldn't you'd would never consider a hunger strike, would you? <laughs> I mean, if it meant all college football fans going on a hunger, hunger strike to like prove a point, then maybe. But you know, I, I, I like eating food, so I don't think that I'd ever go on a <laughs> hunger strike. Brandon, have you gotten any positive response or any traction with any college presidents? Uh, that would be no. Uh, I mean, college, not not really. I mean, I I'm very strategic about the presidents that I tended to. For I mean, pretty much for the whole first since I've been starting, this has all been about the automatic qualifying presidents. But you see, down in Memphis, where actually there's a girl I went to school with, she actually plays. She actually, she's a student athlete at Memphis, and the Memphis president, she said that she would like a playoff because it, it it would bring more results. So, you know, now as we get into the, okay, it's time to do this against the BCS, you get more into sending it to those presidents who actually believe in a playoff. Did you ever, did you ever, because I read some of the articles leading up to, to our interview here, did you ever get a response from Bill Hancock? Oh yeah, I mean I've got one of those general. I've got the general response from Mr. Hancock, but nothing, nothing, nothing ever serious. It's always, dear Brandon, the BCS is working. This is the best system ever devised to match number one versus number two. I mean stuff like that. Something that you go on the BCS website and you read, but not, but never an official response. I mean, because I mean, what's Mr. Hancock going to say to me, dear Brandon? Your proposal gives the Pac-10 champion and the Big Ten champion exactly what we've been looking for for the last hundred years. He's not going to come on the radio or come to me and say that because he doesn't want a playoff. <laughs> so, I mean, I just don't see Mr. Hancock ever truly responding to me unless it comes from, a, you know, someone in Congress asking him to respond to me. So you think you think the political route is the only route available to uh, to, to making or implementing, as you call it, the Kennedy proposal? Well, in last year, you know, or a couple years ago, President Obama had endorsed the playoff, and I don't know if you got a chance to watch the, my YouTube video, Do You Believe in the BCS Playoff? And, you know, you hear uh, Executive Director Hancock saying, well, Mr. President, he didn't, 
she hasn't really said that after the inauguration. It was all beforehand. I mean, so this is what we have here. We have the president of the United States endorsing a playoff. We have, you know, Vice President Biden who requested the 2005 hearing saying that, you know, he would rather have a playoff. And, yeah, Senator has the longest-serving Republican, I think, is, to the best of my knowledge, in the Senate endorsing the playoff. And you see the administrators of the BCS saying, not for several years, not for many years, if ever. And they're just always dismissive of people. I mean, they're being dismissive of the president of the United States of America. So, so I don't what's really your, see... What, so, Brandon, what's your, ne- what's your next move? Uh, the next move is on Saturday, actually. I am sending a letter to President Emmerich of the NCAA. <laughs> last, last year, I did, send a pre- I did send a letter to President Brand. But, you know, he was going through his illness, and I was incapable of receiving a response from him. But this morning, I actually sent an email to Athletic Director Hayden at the University of Southern California when I was capable of visiting him, uh, well, actually visiting USC. I went down there a couple times with my uncle, and I actually was able to get a front row ticket Get, make my way down there and actually hand my proposal to athletic director Hayden, and I sent a letter to him regarding the associate or regarding the antitrust lawsuit, and if he believes in the BCS playoff. So we'll uh, pursue getting his response this week, and then on Saturday I'll be sending out a letter to President Emmert of the NCAA, and I will actually be CCing that to all the automatic qualifying presidents. What did what did Pat Hayden say, and de, and does he believe in a playoff system? I have not been able to garner a response from Athletic Director Hayden, but I do believe that we will uh, get one from him sometime this week, hopefully. So if if we get into uh, next spring mm-hmm. and there's no forward movement, would you be prepared to? Go back and live on the streets of Georgetown to uh, to to lobby again. Uh, the you know Washington D.C. politicians for your Kennedy proposal is that what you, is that in the long you know in in the long scheme of things what what you're ready and willing to do? Um, I'm not ready and willing to do that. I think by going once and getting an article in the post that I will, that I will forever be homeless and lobbying uh, Capitol Hill, but. I know I'm pretty blessed in my life, and I've gotten back to Spokane. I've gotten hooked up with some good people, and I am a, an employee at the Olive Garden, and that's, that's another one of my that's a job that I do right here. Is I I am a server down at the Olive Garden, and with the Olive Garden is you can transfer anywhere if your general manager approves it, and if the general manager that I'm trying to transfer to approves that, so. Olive Garden is a multi-billion-dollar company, and we have restaurants all over the country. And so uh, I believe there's a couple, uh, couple Olive Gardens over there in the District of Columbia. Mm. So as long as I set my, you know, I get my money right and I have everything staged, or as my dad would say, if I have all my ducats in a row and everything lined up, when I uh, go to transfer, I could go over and transfer to D.C. I'd still be able to work at Olive Garden and perhaps even Banana Republic too. That would be the plan because I do work at Banana Republic as well, but I'd be able to still do both jobs over in the District of Columbia, and instead of doing the KP just in my room or on the Internet and talking with some friends, I'd actually be able to get back to looking to looking the senators in the eyes and the congresswomen and men in the eyes and speaking to them about the Kennedy proposal. Yeah, I don't know how many of them will go to the Olive Garden for the free bread. Well, C- and Corey and Ari so might. Though. Corey yeah. and Ari might be able to. <laughs> I mean, you, would you hook Corey and Ari up with, you know, kind of, if not a free meal, at least kind of a deal on uh, at the Olive Garden if they were able to come by? Well, I, I'd have to give them a genuine Italian dining experience, and I, I'd have to hook them up that way. But my boss might be looking around when I go through those hookups, and I'm not, I don't want to get Yeah, you got to be careful, don't you, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I, we wish you. They can come see me. Brandon, we wish you the very best. And seriously, if you you know if you do get back in back to Washington D.C., look up Ari and Corey, and uh, you know certainly uh, you've got good you, you- that we should be creating a playoff system.